Good morning. Welcome to KROQE News 13. I'm Fernanda Lopez. We're just one day away from the most anticipated day in sports, the Super Bowl. Millions will be watching the New England Patriots take on the Atlanta Falcons in Houston, Texas. That's where we find KROQE correspondent Alyssa Orange this morning. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, Fernanda. I tell you what, fans are so excited about tomorrow's big game, but they've spent all week doing stuff like we have, traveling around the city of Houston, seeing what all the city has to offer. I've seen a lot of very cool things, but I tell you what, what I saw yesterday, definitely at the top of my list, not because of just the creativity, but also the story behind it. Let's introduce you to the Beer Can House. Iconic house, and uh, it says Houston all over it. The house gave him, it gave him an opportunity to be as creative as he could. What started as a normal house on Malone Street in Houston has turned into an aluminum masterpiece. He basically started out on a Saturday one weekend just tending to the grounds outside, and that one weekend turned into a 20-year period. John Milkovich started decorating his yard and house with marbles, rocks, and beer cans in 1968. He would go to sleep every night and uh, consider what his plans were for the, the next day. Covered in flattened cans, canned streamers, glass bottles, and pop tops, it's estimated to be around 50,000 beer cans in all. The house is now owned by the Orange Show Center of Visionary Arts and has become a must-see attraction. It's really cool. Never seen anything like it. It's a work of art. You hear the wind blowing and the cans rattling, so it's awesome. Everyone who comes here walks up just looking at a house covered in beer cans, but walks away with so much more. I feel like they take away a sense of, of understanding. They, they take away a sense of creativity. They also leave their mark in the visitor center. We have a map that shows people from Australia, Madagascar, Europe. And so I made sure to leave mine as well. Well, Q told me that John did not discriminate when it came to the beers that he drank. He just drank anything that was cheap. And the 50,000 cans that decorate the house all drank by John and Mary and then some neighbors who would come over from time to time during the 20 years it took to complete the project. Fernanda. Pretty cool stuff. Now, Alyssa, did John have any specific motivation when he started the project? <laughs> Well, this is what's so great. Mary says that she would ask him to mow the lawn and he got so tired of mowing the lawn that he decided to just put marbles and rocks and beer cans and decorate it, cover up the grass so there was no more lawn to mow. And then once he was done with that, he moved on to the house. But you got to give Mary props. That is a strong woman who lets her husband decorate a perfectly good house in beer cans. Yeah, absolutely. OK, thank you, Alyssa. Pretty interesting stuff, huh? Yeah, that's a lot of <laughs> drinking to be had. Yeah, that is. You know, hopefully John and Mary had some help and didn't drink all those 50,000 cans <laughs> There we themselves. go. I'm sure they did. <laughs> all right, let's take you outside and look at the big eye where this morning we're looking at some clear skies here across central New Mexico. A few clouds in the southern half of the state, but it's a cold start out there with those clear skies. Temperatures have fallen back into the middle 30s at 34 degrees. A light wind out of the north at 5 miles per hour, making it feel a little bit colder than it actually is. So you'll need that heavier jacket this morning, but we're looking at the middle 20s in Taos and Santa Fe, teens in Durango, middle 40s in Las Vegas, 20s in Roswell and Carlsbad with 35 degrees to begin your weekend in Alamogordo. So a few clouds across the southern half of the state, but we're starting out dry here in central and northern New Mexico. As we head into the afternoon, we're looking at high temperatures into the upper 50s and lower 60s. We'll talk about how long this warm stretch of weather will continue and who will be feeling some winds coming up in your full forecast. Fernando. Okay, thank you, Chris. So two suspected car thieves accused of killing a 14-year-old girl and her mother are expected in court next week. But now we're seeing a new video of Paul Garcia's arrest who was captured at an Edgewood McDonald's after two weeks on the run. News 13's Jenny Nguyen has that cell phone video. I don't know when I'll get closure. I don't, there's nothing anyone could say or do, especially these two individuals that, you know, like I said, will just be there in prison cell. David Arredondo lost his wife and daughter last month when police say Alexis Groves and Paul Garcia stole a van and crashed it into the car Shaylee and Shauna Bowling were in. But the family has found a little more peace after Paul Garcia's arrest. We were ecstatic that this other person was caught and he needs to be in jail finally with the woman that he was involved with in this. We're happy 
that they have him. Garcia was on the run for more than two weeks until he was arrested at an Edgewood Walmart. On surveillance video, you can see Garcia walking to the store, then shopping. An employee of the McDonald's inside the Walmart spotted him. She called it in. Then the man facing life behind bars was taken off to jail as families inside the McDonald's watched on. Now the family says they're doing their best to continue the life Shaylee and Shauna would want them to have and look after Shaylee's three-year-old brother. My little boy and I will continue on. You know, we'll love each other, teach him to love others, and, you know, we, We'll just move on. We'll just be strong. Jeannie Nguyen, KRQE News 13. No APD tells us they do not know where Paul Garcia was hiding or who he was with over the past couple weeks. They say Garcia is refusing to talk with them. Both he and Groves are charged with a double murder and remain jailed on $100,000 cash only bonds. News 13 will continue to bring you the latest on what happens with Alexis Groves and Paul Garcia. You can stay up to date on air, online and on the KRQE News app. One man who police say broke into an Albuquerque home is still on the run this morning, and now we're learning more about that deadly incident. It happened last month near 98th and Sage. Police say 41-year-old Ramon Varela is one of the two masked men who broke into the home. Investigators say his accomplice, 20-year-old Raymond Sanchez, used it to work for the homeowner. The homeowner shot and killed him during that robbery while Varela got away. Some Santa Fe High School basketball players are under suspension this morning as police investigate a possible sex crime. The Santa Fe High School assistant principal called police last week to investigate a voyeurism case. A police report says a 14-year-old girl told the assistant principal about the claim. The report does not explain why police are looking into voyeurism charges, but no one has been charged in the case. The superintendent confirmed some basketball players are suspended for the rest of the season. The investigation in Paris continues after a man armed with machetes attacked soldiers at the Louvre Museum. Police say during the attack he shouted, God is great in Arabic, before he was shot five times in the legs and stomach. The man had two backpacks containing only spray, uh, spray paint can canisters. One soldier was injured with a minor head wound. Visitors at the Louvre were kept inside for two hours as a precaution. The suspect is a 29-year-old Egyptian national. Here this morning, a bill that would allow New Mexico school districts to shorten school days now goes to the Senate Finance Committee. Democrat Senator Bill Souls from Las Cruces is sponsoring the bill. It would allow flexibility during financial emergencies to shorten days or even the school year below state mandated, mandated requirements. It would only be used if the state reduces funding by 2 percent after the districts decided their budgets. Now this comes in the midst of budget cuts during the state's financial crisis. Now you can keep up on the Roundhouse coverage on KRQE.com, uh, uh, our news app on air and online. This wild video is uh, starting to go viral this morning. This is Weatherford, Texas. Police shared this sped up video and you can see officers chasing after a ca loose cow on the streets with multiple units responding. Eventually two cowboys on horseback reeling in with ropes. Thankfully, no one was hurt in this chase. Police say it's a reminder why Weatherford is the cutting horse capital of the world. After the break, get ready for your commute to take even longer. Come Monday, more ART construction at an already busy intersection will slow things down even more. We'll tell you where coming up. And an unlucky visit of family.